Hey, what's up guys? I'm Frey Torn and welcome back to Hearts Rhyme 4 as we are playing as the Kingdom of Italy. So the first thing we're going to do in today's episode is go ahead and improve our main infantry design um, by adding field hospitals. Now you notice we have not done any names for these yet. I think I've gotten some name suggestions for like elite troops, uh, you know, so I guess that would be like Alpine or, or Marines. Uh, but yeah, we haven't got any name suggestions for the tanks or the infantry. So if you want to provide some, then post that down in the comments below and we'll get these guys named something different or we can just keep it as they are now. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and save that. And uh, we will have to train up all these troops before the war. Might take a little bit for that kicks in. And then we'll get these guys training. Uh, we don't have anything in there that needs to be trained up. We do got these guys here. That'll give us a little bit more army experience uh, because we add the field hospitals to the tanks next, the light tanks. Uh, we did win here, excellent. Uh, we got that basic armor protection, so we can go ahead and change up those tank designs. Uh, just improve their, their armor a little bit. It's not a, a major consideration for the light tanks, but yeah, uh, I think it might be worth doing. Uh, we'll take a look at it anyways, see what the production cost difference will be. Because uh, it will increase the production cost by a little bit. Uh, so we're now in 1938. Let's go ahead and start getting the 1938 text. We'll start with the computing machine. And is this the air designer? Which yeah, we still haven't haven't gotten yet. So we've got to get these filled out here. Uh, I think that'll be the next goal. Since we, we did get this guy last time. When I said that we would do the uh, air designer. Uh, let's go ahead and work on these tanks. Let's see if we want to, to change them, I should say. Uh, so look at the cheetahs and again, there's not really anything else that we need to change here It would only be the armor type uh, going over to the the welded armor So yeah, that does give you a lot more armor to the point where it would be difficult probably for anybody to pierce early on Yeah, I think it would be pretty difficult um, You know outside of other tanks Which uh, you're not gonna see a lot of countries having uh, so let's go and change it Obviously, we saw the production cost was going to go up by a little bit, but it's not too bad. It's going up by two, two points. I think it's worth it. Uh, so let's go ahead and save this, and then we'll go ahead and do the same with the uh, the pounders. Though, I guess you could make the argument. Did I not add those? I guess you make the argument that it's not worth doing it for the self-propelled artillery, increasing their production cost. Yeah, I suppose it's, it's really not. Uh, though they do already have the the lesser armor, I think. No, it's it's the same. That's right. We kept the same design here. So yeah, I guess we could not add it for these guys because it's just not as big of a consideration. It looks like we're short on quite a few resources here, so unfortunately we're gonna have to trade away some some factories. Uh, yeah, it's a shame we're we're lacking on steel. Perhaps we should look at building some infrastructure up then because we do have steel. You can see up there in the north. You better get. I mean, it's a factory worth, and it would take you a little while to to build this. But yeah, I think it, it might be worth it uh, because it's still much cheaper than, say, building uh, a civilian factory and trading that away. So let's put this under that military factory and get that started. Uh, we also have another one here. That's not going to get you as much, though. I mean, it'll get us a, a little bit of steel, but it's not going to stop us from having to trade. And then down here, there's probably not much to get either. Yeah, there's really not anything in our colonies right now. Um, so yeah, I think this is what we're gonna we're gonna work on. Just getting the infrastructure built there, and then we're gonna have to we're gonna have to trade for the rest of it, unfortunately. Um, so maybe just trade one factory for the steel, and we don't want to trade with any of them. Good trade with Germany, I suppose, but I prefer trading with minor powers. So let's trade with Sweden. Just one factory worth, and then the chromium. Um, I thought we were trading with the Portuguese. What happened to them? They must have changed up their trade laws or something because they're no longer up here. We'll trade for what we need here, but yeah, I could have swore we had... You know, I think we actually canceled that, didn't we? Because we didn't need it anymore. Looks like we need a bit more, so we might have to start trade with uh, another country. So we'll do South Africa here. Again, the steel will be fixed once we build that infrastructure up, so we're not going to go any further on that. Alright, so these guys are all done training, it looks like. All right, excellent. And we did change up, yeah, we changed up those those tanks. Alright, so I'm going to try and attack here. 
Uh, it looks like the Chinese were able to push across the river. That's interesting. Yeah, Japan is struggling here, aren't they? All right, so we're going to help out and push forward on this front. Unfortunately, our division here got pushed back. Yeah, he'll make his way back over there. Maybe we'll let him get his organization up a little bit higher before we do. I almost feel like we should just go ahead and do a, a fallback line because it's taking too long to do. So just get him, you know, all the way up to four organization before we send him over to the front. Uh, we did finish up this focus here. Excellent. I want to see what those assault battalions are. Uh, so let's go ahead and get the last one here, uh, which is going to improve that uh, spirit that we have uh, by 10% non-core manpower. And just remember what we got from our uh, king and the new emperor of Ethiopia is 2.5%. That's a pretty big difference there. Uh, you're also going to improve the militia organization and modify the template cap of those militia units so you can have more of them. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and, and get this one, and then we'll be done there. I don't know that we'll have enough online support yet uh, to go down this way. So we'll probably start knocking out some other other focuses. Like perhaps getting this one here, the Ministry of Italian Africa. I might want to go ahead and get that after that one. Uh, yes, that's right. I forgot. I want to take a look at these new battalions that we have here, the Salt Battalion. I want to see what they do. So it looks like it has some, some pretty decent stats here. I, I wonder how that would compare to artillery. So what you might want to do is actually um, just look at it this way so you can see how it would improve it. So if you just switched out from artillery uh, to the assault, you can kind of compare these two. Uh, you can see HP is going to go up, organization is going up, uh, suppression is going to go up. Not that that really is necessary. Uh, you're obviously going to have more weight. Supply use actually goes down because artillery uses a lot of supply. The soft attack, of course, is going to go down as you'd expect. Same with the hard attack. Uh, but defense is going up. Breakthroughs going up slightly. Piercing is going down here. And most importantly, um, you're, you're going to need less artillery uh, by doing that. So that's interesting. A in very interesting choice here. Yeah, uh, because you got the artillery here, so you don't really need it here. So I'm very tempted to put these into some of our designs. I'm glad we got it though, because I wanted to know uh, exactly what it does. Now it does require a little bit of support equipment, but I think most of the, the support battalions do, of course, the name here. But yeah, that's an interesting design. It's different. Uh, I didn't even know they were adding a new support battalion here. Looks like we lost this battle here. Also, this guy's ready to go back to the front. He's gonna move it on over there. Uh, we got the armor piercing cap shell. Uh, so that'll unlock the, the guns once we, you know, obviously we gotta get to 1939 to be able to do that without a, a research penalty. We're gonna get, get all of these. So let's go and start working on those now. Just get each one in turn. And uh, still waiting to get to, I think it's 127 political power is what we need to get to. And so we did finish up on the justification for the claim in Austria. Remember, we're going to wait here until these snows dissipate a bit because it's still snowing. Still got the deep snow. So yeah, I think it would be best to, to just wait. But we can go ahead and move the planes over there uh, if they're done training. And they could train over there as well. But yeah, we'll move these, these fighters over there. And the close air support here. And so that leaves a little bit of room for these. I don't know if they'll all be a fit. I mean, it looks uh, almost like it'll fit exactly. No, not quite. No, not quite. We don't have any other air bases right here, but we do have this one here, so not too worried about it. What we can do is just take the ones that have like the most range, which looks like it's going to be these fighters here. Those are our more modern fighters, and then just move them over there. Or you know what? Actually, we don't need to do that because we've got tactical bombers coming over here, so they can move over there. That makes far more sense. I got way better range. All right, so let's try this attack again. Let's see if we can't get a win here. Uh, looks like it's gonna be a loss, but we'll keep it going anyways. Cause yeah, it might turn around for us. So yeah, I wasn't really planning on doing a lot of attacks here, but yeah, it will definitely help. Um, so this is an event that I think fires over and over again. Uh, it's donations for the United States. And it, it seems almost to me like it has no cost. Uh, Cause I was doing this in my test uh, this is your, you're basically helping support the Silver Legion. And I could be wrong here because I was thinking that you gave a civilian factory away. But when we take this, you'll see we're still at 28 civilian factories. 
Uh, so basically, they get a civilian factory, and we get 25 political power, and for no cost at all. So it's like, why not do it? Both sides benefit, uh, given we don't really want to benefit the, the Americans, but we want the political power uh, so that we can do these here quicker. Uh, with that, we can go ahead and get our aircraft designer now. So we're going to go with the, the light aircraft designer, which means we're going to have to make one adjustment uh, to all of our, our fighters. It says it does it for the small airframe, but I don't think it actually does it for small airframe. I think it only does it for fighters. Like if you have like a close air support, I don't think they get, even if they're a small airframe, I don't think they get the, the bonus. Uh, I believe I tested that before and it didn't uh, didn't result in them getting it. Now we do have a lot of other options here. So you got multi-role aircraft, increase in reliability, air equipment experience cost, you know, strategic bombing. Uh, this would be helpful obviously, but uh, we, it looks like we can't get this one right now. You have to have uh, the same ship designer, it seems. Uh, we got this one here, which will improve the heavy fighters. I mean, this is all reliability bonuses for the most part, which aren't as useful for planes. Or you can uh, instead increase the ground attack for your close air support. But yeah, this is a clear choice for me. The agility and, and higher speed for the fighters. Uh, so yeah, let's go ahead and get that. And uh, we'll want to take a look at our planes and get them changed up, uh, the Falcos. Uh, so these showing, and there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff here. Uh, so we don't need to look at the interwar stuff. So let's only get rid of those. Just gotta clear this up a bit. Cause I can't tell what the hell's going on over here. All right, so that cleans this up a little bit so we can see what the hell we're doing here. Um, so we just need to make one change and there's not actually anything that I want to add here, I don't think. Uh, the radio navigation, uh, while it does help with night penalty for any planes, really the key here is strategic bombing. That's, that's what this is for, strategic bombers. Uh, so neither one of those are, are necessary. Uh, none of this would really help us either. And yeah, this will give you the, the air attack, but reduces your agility, so probably not, uh, and your max speed's probably not worth it for a fighter. Um, so there's no changes we want to make here, so we're just going to have to make a one change just so that we get uh, the design on here. So you'll see we'll get it uh, where we didn't have it before. So it's unfortunate, but it's only two experience, guys. So you just save it. Oops, I forgot to change the name this time. So yeah, we just save it and then redesign it again. Like so. Uh, I guess that's another two experience here, but whatever. So let's go ahead and get the new Falcos out there since they do have that improved agility. And then we can take a look at the, the dive bombers, but again, I'm pretty sure that uh, it's not going to add it. Yeah, so we, we changed it and you see it's not adding. So yeah, it's only for... I guess the fighters seem to be called basic small airframe rather than, you know, close air support says basic clo air, close air support. So maybe fighters don't actually say that. And so that kind of indicates that it's only going to upgrade fighters. And that's how it was before as well, before the change. It only improved fighters. So it's, you know, nothing has changed there. But I just thought with the wording, maybe we could uh, do it before. So I tested it, you know, do it for all the planes uh, that are light airframe, but that's not the case. Uh, we should get this infrastructure changed up here soon. 30th March is when we'll get that built. Uh, we can only get a few more things building. Uh, as far as what we're going to want, we still don't have the, the two lines of civilian factories yet. So I, th I feel like we're going to need more of these. Uh, plus, we, we can build these a little bit quicker as well. Let's get more more civilian factories. All right, so remember, we got another month until we're going to declare war on Austria. I can take a look at the snow situation, but I highly doubt here in March is going to be that much better. At the very least, it's not snowing anymore, but we still have the deep snows here. Um, so as far as when we lose this, well, I guess we can look over here as well. Uh, it's going to be on the 20th of April, so we got plenty of time, guys, for those snows to, to dissipate. And, you know, we're still getting the, the army experience here as we do these battles. And remember, once we, uh, we start that war, they're going to pull our troops back. All right, so we've won here. I guess we got to do the defense next. I mean, we could try and push forward this way, but yeah, we're not going to have much time, so I don't think we'll get that much more involved in this. Looking for other attacks we could do. I guess we can attack this guy here. Move him to support it. 
It might be a win, but probably not because I just sent that division over there, so we're going to have to stay here. Alright, well, that's fine. Uh, we got the improved machine tools. Excellent. So I think we're we're done here for now. We do need to get the fuel refining. As you can see, we are having some some fuel issues. We should probably take a look and see if we got any ships training unnecessarily. Uh, we also need to get these here. That's going to be 172 days. I think we should probably just go ahead and get that now. And then we need these as well, but we're not going to get those in time for the war. So I think we're going to go ahead and get the radar. We'll get that next level and get uh, get those onto our tanks. All right, so we got to really pay attention to the, uh, the time here so I don't go over and lose the war goal because that would be disastrous. Uh, we got the armor-piercing capped medium shells. So we'll go after the small caliber ones. And we were waiting on... Yeah, that's right. We were waiting to get some... Uh, let me just take a look at what we're doing with the repairs here. Let's go ahead and say we can use up to 10 here so they can repair quicker. Uh, they're currently using, using one right now. And, oh, that's what I did when I built those. I didn't mean to do that. All right, so we just wanted to change those out. I knew I, I put one on there, and I wasn't sure why it didn't change. That was why. All right, so we're going to need to probably pull back. So just so we can keep those submarines building. And then the, the re one that's repairing, we'd want that to go into the, the convoy. So, you know what, let's go like that. All right, so that'll work. We're still not doing the destroyers yet. I think it was 30 experience to get those designed. Uh, frankly, we just need more dockyards. Kind of a problem here. Uh, but yeah, we can go in and uh, get this get this designed, and we'll just gotta remember to stop if it gets too too expensive here. Uh, we still don't have the radar yet. Get those torpedoes in there. You got the engines, and then these are just gonna be the the depth charges. And it looks like yeah, 30 experience exactly. Uh, so let's do the historical destroyers. Those crabs there. And then name these sub hunters. So we can at least start building these. These are just the twos. So yeah, we, we want to at least get them on the line, even if we can only put like a dockyard into them or something. All right, so, so we'll get those started at least. All right, excellent. And all of our dockyards have been taken up by those those battleships that we're we're currently building, but they take so long that it's it's best for us to work on those. Uh, these guys are both repairing right now. Uh, apparently, we never turned them on to automatic split off. Okay. Let's go and dip back over here and see if there's anything we can do. If we sent another division over here, we'd be able to have to change the front to get them to stay there. Yeah, we could try to launch this attack here. This time with both divisions for the entire attack and see if that's a win. Looks like it's not going to be. All right, we'll just well looks like it was going to change over to green there for a minute, but it's fine. This this war isn't going to last much longer for us, and I don't want to pay too much attention to it because we're going to end up missing our opportunity here. Snows are still deep. Yeah, they might not. I don't even know if they melt at all because of the elevation. We got the construction two, so let's go ahead and go after excavation two next. Well, we'll give it a, uh, the maximum amount of time to try and get these snows melted. Maybe turn this down just so I don't blow past it. But yeah, they, they might not melt because of the elevation. And that's fine. And maybe go up to 18th just so I don't mess anything up. Yeah, we'll just have to fight in the snow. That yeah, troops are going to be cold. Uh, do we have snows on our own? We do, so at the very least, they'll be acclimated to the weather. So let's go ahead and get our planes moving over there. We're not fully trained up, but yeah, we're not going to wait. Uh, these are two tactical bombers and one close air support. So move these guys over here, and the two tactical bombers can come over here. We'll all be assigned to the Alpine region. I should have these guys there as well. And then have these all assigned to the Alpine region as well, and their fighters and close air support. All right, so 300 and 315 is what we currently have here. Uh, we should be trying to use some of our command power here to improve uh, some of our admirals. If there's like obvious uh, things we might want to get for them, such as here, you might want to go ahead and do the, the lone wolf uh, because we might be outnumbered by the British fleet. Uh, we, we won't be so outnumbered that we want them to not be able to find us. Uh, but yeah, getting the enemy fleet size penalty plus 10% I think would be helpful. And this also allows us to get the smoke screen specialist, just in case we got to run away. 
which might be a possibility. Uh, over here, it's gonna be the same deal. Let me see if we have got the block blockade runner. and get that concealment expert with that one. We got inshore fighters. Well, that's kind of interesting. You don't see that trait very often. We got the iron side, which then allows you to get these ones. Uh, man, that's kind of makes me want to have him in in charge here. Now he does have that penalty though. Yeah, to the naval AA attack. But yeah, we can go to get something here. Uh, probably the. I'm thinking the big guns expert for the, the extra ship attack there. Uh, that'll unlock marksman, and he actually has the ability to get a couple more over here. So this is a chance to score a critical hit. You can also just instead reduce the chance to receive a critical hit. I think this is more useful for us. That's what we'll get. But yeah, that's a, such a great trait because there's so many uh, uh, good things you can get from that one. So I like getting that. Let's see if we have any other things here. Uh, we could go ahead and get the Lancer. We could turn him into a Sea Wolf. Yeah, so we could do that. Uh, or you can go with the Destroyer Leader here. I think we'll wait on that one. I don't know exactly how we're going to be using all of our admirals just yet. And it's not a consideration for this war, of course. All right, so we're ready to go ahead and declare war. So this is interesting. Uh, this is going to result in an event to the end of the League of Nations. I don't know if that's, that's a new thing. I don't recall getting that event before. I don't recall seeing it here either. All right, so declared war on Austria. And, you know, we obviously are going to have to fight in these mountainous, snowy trains. It's going to be a more difficult fight than than typical, just because of their their terrain. But uh, I think we should be fine. Um, so we're probably just going to send everything we got. I know that tanks are not great here, guys, uh, in this terrain, but we've got a lot of other troop types here to help us out, including the Alpine troops, which are going to be big. Uh, so let's go take these guys, put them over here, and let me see how we want to do this. Probably attack here is what I'm thinking. So cut that unit off once you take this. Uh, province here and so we'll want to leave one guy here Let's see if we can get some wins in these areas obviously that's a easy win all right so this is that event the end of the League of Nations okay so let's go and support here and then we're gonna bring one unit over here to support these guys in their attack all right so again we're gonna control the skies they've got 42 fighters uh, this will get us some some air experience. Having some trouble there. That might not be a win, but that's why I'm sending one more unit. Uh, we did finish up that focus, and we probably don't have unaligned anywhere near enough. Yeah, we're at 19%. You can see it's going up, uh, but yeah, it's it's not enough uh, for us to to take this focus here. And I don't think it's enough to even justify getting those penalties yet. We probably won't do this until after we're ready to do this one, or, or very very close, anyways. Uh, since it's just penalties. Um, so we need to get the Expand Rome Flying School. I think that's key. So we should probably get that next. Because we don't want any of our guys to die. I did say we were going to do this one though, and that's 35 days. So we'll do that. There's always there's always so many things you want to get, guys. Alright, so again, not winning there. And, uh, you know, all the Dominions are going to... ...break away from the British. All right, so this will be a win here, and then we'll just start pushing forward that way. And then once this is a win, uh, yeah, we'll probably be able to spread out. And I don't, I don't think they'll have all this territory defended. They don't have enough divisions. All right, so now that we've won here, uh, we got to do the defense. And then what we want to do is make sure that the tanks, uh, we use their speed. We'll have these guys go here. Uh, we need somebody to attack here to lock those units down. We'll send those Alpine troops over there. And then the infantry. Let's have one go over here. I'm also going to walk, knock this guy down. Unless he's not going to get there quick enough, which he might be able to just because they move pretty fast in the mountains. Yeah, so we're going to need to attack there just for the purpose of locking him down. Once we get a little bit closer to him arriving. And let me just make sure that everybody here is moving. All right, so let's keep our eye on him so he doesn't get out of there. Because that would obviously not be good. We want to cut him off. That's the purpose here. Uh, we don't need to have this tank here. 
Can we get over there? No, we we'll have to go this way. Alright, so they should be over there soon, so let's go ahead and start the attack now. Lock those guys down. Alright, we've cut them off over here anyways, but we want to make sure we get that, that province taken. Alright, so we don't need any tanks over here, I don't think. Let's just move towards their capital. So all the tanks will stay on this side. I'm going to get rid of this here. And then clearly going to need more troops on this side here. Not sure who all they got signed over there. And these guys can stay on that side. We want these two coming over here. Alright, so we do need to expand this because you see these guys, they're attempting to leave here. Is it not going to let me? Yeah, it looks like it's not going to let me. They should be alright though. Uh, so let's go, go this way and then get across the river here. And then let's go and attack these guys to get this finished up. Alright, so wipe them out. Let's go and push forward here. Since nobody's there to stop us, we eventually want to attack this guy. Where his organization gets too high. Alright, so they got somebody else there, unfortunately. Alright, so I'm going to switch this out. Well, that is a mountain province. Probably shouldn't do that. Alright, so we're waiting for more troops to get over here, essentially. So we can attack those guys. Uh, they are in the, the hills here, so not going to be as difficult to get the win there. We've already wiped out one of those units, and yeah, this is not working. We want them to go over there, but first go over this way and just get this, this territory taken out. We'll have both of them go this way just in case that, that cab unit, it looks like he's going to retreat this way, so we'll have to fight him over there. Bring him over there. And get this cab unit helping out as well. Alright, so we're defending, so we can't really do much over here. Uh, we could go ahead and attack, just go across the river, just get that done a little bit quicker. And then let's go ahead and get these troops moving over here. Just get it pushed forward. Alright, so this is going to be a tougher fight here, as you'd expect. Alright, so this will allow us to get behind these guys. Make sure these guys stick around here. Alright, so all these troops are going over this way. That's probably a bit much. So let's uh, not do that. <laughs> we'll have these guys go over this way. And, yeah, that's going to drag those ones in. I think six is probably enough, honestly. Bring the rest over here. And we did get our volunteer forces back. We'll just leave them here. Although, yeah, they were supposed to go onto that front. We'll just wait. Because, yeah, they're, they're, we got we pulled those from the African front. And I'm not sure if we're going to get behind this guy in time. Because he is faster. It looks like that's a no. All right, so we're going to have to fight him all the way across, unfortunately. We're making our way up towards Vienna. Vienna is a bit further. You know, their capital is a bit further from us as, as the Italians. So we're going to use the tanks to lock them down since it's into the hills. It's better than fighting in the mountains for tanks. And he can move really fast as well. So I'm going to push forward here. And push forward here though we are defending so not able to go any further just yet. Uh, so we did get the military police. Uh, we have a couple different support units we want to get added to our units. Uh, we also have research bonuses here, so continue uh, could continue doing this just to get those, make use of those. Uh, I guess recon company for the speed would be the next thing we want here. So that's what we're going to do. Let's go after the recon companies. 110 days to get that knocked out. Uh, looks like we've also gotten that ship tech. Uh, so we need to do, did we do all these already? Yeah, we did them all. All right, excellent. So we're going to continue getting passive bonuses, though. So we're going to get the firefighting drills next. Uh, that's pretty useful to have. Just kind of keep that one invested in ships at all times. Uh, and then let's go and attack here, since that's clearly a loss as of right now. And I don't think we need to defend this side of the river. All right, so not able to attack here just yet. They're still trying to get these cab units wiped out as well. Uh, let's go and push for it here. So far it's going pretty well. Not having any difficulties, as we expected. Did not anticipate a difficult attack here. 
even with the, the rough terrain and the snows. I still didn't think it'd be too difficult, though those will result in higher casualties than you'd normally have, uh, simply because, you know, the terrain is, is difficult. Uh, let's go ahead and put the MPs into the cab unit now. So we're going to go ahead and save that. And then I know we're in the middle of war here. Uh, but I think we're going to add more field hospitals. We already got them in that division, but uh, we need to get them into this one. Uh, so let's go ahead and add the field hospitals here. And I think that's going to be it for now. We'll make more adjustments once the war is over. And which doctrine can we get? We can get an air doctrine. Well, before we go spending that, uh, I wanted to get the, the naval bombers built. We're over here in 1938. We haven't even uh, started on those yet. So I think it would be wise to go ahead and, and get them designed. Uh, we're going to be doing the... I guess it's the basic small airframe here. And we'll just start from the, well, hmm. It might be better to, to use one of these other ones because then you won't have to change the engine out. And you're already gonna have to change all this stuff out anyways. So we'll use the, the Falco, I think. Yeah, we'll use the Falco design. Go ahead and save as new. And then we're going to keep the engines there and change these out to torpedo mountings. So we cannot change this one over to another torpedo mounting. You can only have the one on here. Uh, so in that case, you'd probably want to get uh, one of these weapons. Uh, and that will still improve your your, your attack and, and such when you're doing naval strike. Um, it depends on which one you get. Uh, so if you get the small bomb bay, uh, then it's going to improve your naval attack and naval targeting when you do port strike, but not going to help you out when you're doing the naval strike. Uh, so if we wanted to do that, we'd have to get the bomb locks. And, uh, you know, that is, of course, going to affect our agility whenever we're on that mission. So these are going to have a uh, fairly low agility, which is kind of part of a... Uh, being bombers though and having all these bombs on them uh, but it will improve our naval attack and our naval targeting so i was going to increase our weight but that shouldn't be a problem i don't think uh we'll take a look at what the weight is uh well maybe this could be a problem uh we'll take a look once we get this assigned uh so uh, as of right now it seems our weight is fine okay i think it was just when we were on that one uh we had that one gun on there because yeah it does look like we're raw right now weight's not too high uh the max speed is pretty decent obviously agility does become a bit of a problem here on these missions but uh, that's to be expected naval attack is is pretty decent so I think this is a good design uh, there's not really anything to add here unless you want to get uh, some defense by sacrificing a bit of agility uh, and also your your max speed since you're adding onto the weight and of course the production cost is gonna go up as well uh, so that's something to consider. Um, however, I, I find that the bigger problem for naval bombers is, is probably not going to be fighters. It's going to be like the, the naval AA. Uh, so, yeah, I don't think we're going to add the defense turrets on here. We'll probably only do that with the uh, bigger ships is what I'm thinking. Or excuse me, the bigger planes. So I don't think we're going to do that, guys. Uh, now, we could add something to improve their surface detection and sub-detection. Uh, to give them the ability to do that if you wanted to like add the the floats on here But again, it's going to increase production and it's going to uh, decrease your agility Honestly, you'd probably be better off creating like a dedicated uh, a Plane for for getting surface detection sub detection. I'm um, so yeah, we're gonna go ahead and leave this as is pretty simple here uh, the name is Pescatore so I believe this means fisherman. I was wanting to name these after the Osprey, uh, but in Italian, apparent, apparently the way you say that is Pescatore Falco, or Falco Pescatore. I don't remember uh, the order. So yeah, let's go ahead and uh, save this. I don't think there's anything else we need to, to adjust here. And uh, get these guys building. Let's put them under the here. We, we frankly need more factories uh, going into planes. Uh, so if we can pull back on anything, uh, infantry equipment's stacked, but we also haven't started building units yet, so we're going to need quite a bit of that. Uh, I think everything else, yeah, everything else is still kind of short at this moment. So what we want to do is just have, once we get that factory into that, we'll, we'll start putting more factories into these planes, because frankly, we're, we're building planes pretty slow right now. Uh, but yeah, you can see that uh, we're having success here, uh, doing some good ground attacks, getting some good damage on them. Uh, we did finish up here. We don't need both of these units, so whichever one's going to get there first. Looks like it's going to be that guy, so we'll put him over here. Uh, currently having uh, six divisions over there, and that's fine. Now, let's go and attack here. You see that we are currently losing that. 
And we can go out to the city, but we'll send the tank here because I believe the tanks do better in the hills than they do in the mountains. Oh, he's not here. He's going over this way. Alright, we don't want both of those going over that way. We want somebody to come over here. Alright, so we'll go ahead and change this up so we get somebody attacking that city location. And we really need more units to go over here, so let's pull back on these tanks. Because I'd actually prefer to cut those guys off, so I'd, I'd like these troops to move over this way. Uh, we could go ahead and attack here just to lock those units down, but I'd prefer to get over this way as quickly as we can. Can we beat him? And if we can't, can we get him locked down in time? Uh, looks like that's going to be a no, unless these guys get there soon. 15 hours is pretty close, but we're going to have to have to attack here and lock them down until the rest of these troops get over here. Alright, so then we're going to want to switch these out. Lock them down while this guy gets across the river. So yeah, we're not, not actually trying to win there. Uh, and then what we want to do is get over here to cut off this unit here that looks like we didn't get there in time. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Alright, so moving towards Vienna. Uh, these guys stopped attacking us for once, so we can go ahead and uh, do our own attack here. Perhaps I should have did this differently. Have this guy going over here and him going over here so that he can move there quicker. And uh, we also need to spend that air experience. Uh, so we're going to get something for our Air Force Command. Uh, so we'll do actually the one that has the research bonuses. Uh, we'll go ahead and get the research bonuses first. And uh, of course we'll want to change this out eventually once we get uh, some of those techs knocked out. And we'll get this one next once we have uh, 50 experience again. And then after that we'll be free to do the doctrines. Alright, let's go and attack over here and here. And we're going to push this way and this way. And nobody needs to be on this side. But I don't want that guy to stop his attack. Alright, so going after Vienna now. And uh, with that, this should be the end of the, the war. Uh, it's kind of the, one of the unfortunate aspects of fighting the Austrians from this direction is that Vienna is so far away. Let's want to attack here. Let's get this guy over here as well. I'm going to get his organization up a little bit before we do the attack. Uh, we'll go ahead and get these guys wiped out here. They're going to be cut off here soon. Well, I guess you got to take this one as well. Look at these cars that just go by my house and they're just so loud. With their uh, bases bumping. It's like you're in the middle of a neighborhood, man. Maybe I've just gotten old. I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like... I know I used to be driving around like that when I was young, but... Now I just think, man, you're, you're in a neighborhood. <laughs> Come on now. You're over here shaking my entire house with your base. It doesn't make you look cool, man. It just irritates me. Again, I'm, I'm getting old. I know, whenever I say that, though, all the people in their 40s and 50s get all irritated. Like, you're not old. Like, try and remember back when you were in your 30s and started feeling your age for your, the first time in your life. Uh, I think we are going to check back on the infantry equipment. We're getting a nice little stack here. We got all these other things we need. Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff we have to get here. Uh, obviously, anti-air, we're probably going to need to put another factory into that. Uh, and then, you know, we wanted to get these, these planes going. Uh, we need more into tanks as well. Uh, but let's start working on the, the planes a bit more. I'm with the next one to the, the close air support there. And there, we're not building those very fast. Uh, this guy's attempting to leave here, but I think we'll get somebody over there in time. Are we taking Vienna? Is that enough to get the win? Yeah, that's enough, sir. 100%. Uh, we took 6,000 casualties total, 6.5 thousand. Well, they took 50.1 thousand. Uh, so, not a bad kill death ratio. Not as high as what we did in Ethiopia. But, of course, you know, almost all these provinces were mountain provinces. And we were fighting in the snows. So, you can't expect that you're going to have a slightly lower kill death ratio. But, overall, that's still pretty fantastic, guys. Uh, so, yeah, it didn't take too many casualties here, which is what we wanted. Uh, so, basically, just waiting for the, the peace treaty to fire. Pronto, signore. And, yeah, we don't have to wait for this guy, so we'll just go into the attack here. Just a matter of time. There we go. So we got all their equipment, so that's helpful. Uh, so, yeah, we just want to go ahead and take all of their territory. We're going to annex this. And, uh, submit our demands, and then confirm and exit. Nothing else to be done here. 
All right, so we've taken over Austria. Since Germany's really not interested in Austria, uh, when they uh, go the Kaiser route, that does mean that we do have a border with Germany, though. Uh, so we do have to keep an eye out for that, any potential issues with them. Uh, let's go ahead and put our troops onto the French and German borders, I suppose. Yeah, we're going to get those guys. Uh, moving over to both these two borders, we might want to split them into two. Yeah, uh, I think we'll go ahead and split them into two. We'll just keep them in the same army for now, obviously. Uh, we want to keep it like that. And just take a few of these troops. Like, particularly the mountain units. Let's bring them over here. How many do we need? One, two, three, four, five. We need five, so we'll just put the bare minimum over here. Uh, I don't know who's more likely to attack, the Germans or the French. You'd think it would be the French. So it might be just split them in half, but I think we need a bunch of units over here to cover this whole thing. One, two, three, four at least, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So yeah, at least ten. I'm not sure uh, the exact borders over here because they're kind of confusing. So what you could do is like ten over there and seven over here is what I'm thinking. Yeah, that's what we'll do. Uh, so let's just move some infantry over there. So this is three, si, signore. seven. And then we'll get them... Some offensive lines. Our planning bonus here. All right, so that looks pretty solid. And then we do have a cab unit here. I think he's supposed to be in this army. I just messed it up. So we'll let these guys train up. Uh, these guys won't need to train because there's nobody here that needs any training. And uh, we'll just move these guys over to Venice. Yeah, and then let them train up. Uh, we'll have them take the rails. And what's wrong with this guy? Uh, he's still currently defending. All right, excellent. So we'll move them all out of there. Let them get to their new borders here. And do we want to help with volunteers anywhere? I'm not entirely sure where conflicts are happening in, in the moment because the Spanish Civil War is just about over. Uh, the Mexican Civil War is uh, going to end here soon as well, so don't need to help out there. Probably just want to send them right back to the Chinese-Japanese conflict so we can continue to build up our, our experience here. Yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. Uh, we didn't build any units or anything, so we won't be able to send any more than the three we had sent before. It does look like they got pushed back a little bit over here, so they lost some of the progress that we had gained for them. Uh, so let's go and send these volunteers over there now. I do have a commander for them, right? Commandi. Yeah, I guess it showed right there that we had a commander. Just want to make sure I hadn't pulled him because I wasn't sure what I had done with the commanders. All right, so we'll send them on over there. And he'll get there on, uh, looks like, June 1st. All right, excellent. Now uh, we can go and take our planes out of the sky. Uh, no longer necessary to have them flying overhead. Uh, and we're going to keep on getting this damn notification here. So I almost want to just get rid of the tactical bombers. You can always train them again. It's not really a big issue. So we don't have that notification up there until we start actually getting those built. Uh, now what we will want to do, uh, we're going to go move all these back to Rome, is get these guys training up. There we go. Beautiful. And just, they can be assigned here. And we'll have to take them off the training. There we go. Alright, uh, so yeah, keep those, those planes training. And again, this is going to keep firing here. That's what I experienced. And so you can just keep on getting political power and I guess giving them civilian factories. Because, you know, it doesn't take it from us, so why wouldn't you do it? And that will also allow us to uh, make a decision here as well. Let me just see if there's anything here that we need to be aware of or might want to do. I don't think so. Uh, so let's just use the, the political power here uh, where we need to get a ship designer as well as a theorist. But we'll start with the ship designer, uh, get the battle fleet designer here. Uh, this is going to result in our screens having lower sub detection. So there is a, a bit of a penalty here, but your capital ships have higher arm, armor and heavy attack while the screens have a higher torpedo attack. So I think it's worth it. So we're gonna go and get it. And, and there's penalties for almost all of these as well. I don't think there's any that don't have penalties. So I think this is the best choice for us. So we'll get that knocked out. And uh, the next batch of political power, I suppose, would be on a theorist. There's also political advisors that we might want to get as well. All right, so we're just waiting to get our troops in China. So we can go ahead and speed this up again. And... Uh, We'll probably just set them in the same location that they were at before. Bulgaria approaches the German Empire. I don't think they joined their faction. Either. I don't think Germany has set up the faction yet. 
that Bulgaria might end up joining the Central Powers, if they do, in fact, form the Central Powers. Um, so this is a, the Colonial Police event, and I'm not sure what the Recruit Them does. If I had to guess, it would mean that you're going to get more of the Militia troops, maybe more of the Irregulars. I'm not entirely sure. But what I was thinking is uh, that, that, that that would give you that, and then this here gives you the Occupation Law. Or maybe this gives you the Occupation Law too, but it just puts it in place while this one only gives you the choice to put it in place. I'm not entirely sure because they don't tell you what this option does. So we're going to do this one because I know that I want that Occupation Law. And we can go ahead and put it in place for all of our Ethiopian territories. Uh, so that's why we need to get that earlier. It, it doesn't actually improve your ability to uh, increase the uh, compliance here. It is not as good as what we're currently using there. But uh, it's still useful to have. And, and let's go ahead and do that now so I don't, I don't forget to change them out. Uh, it actually has some very nice bonuses to it. Uh, so we want to do these in all of the Ethiopian locations. I think actually you might be able to do them in all of the African locations. Uh, so you'll notice that there are some some big differences here. So as far as as far as the daily compliance gain, it is not as good as civilian oversight. But we've already felt that mission. There's no way uh, we're going to get it. I'll just show you how far away we were from getting it. I uh, forgetting the compliance up. So you're at 53% there. But look at these ones, guys. Yeah, it's like 43%. The only place we have it is the ones we started out in. So yeah, we didn't have any chance, I think, of getting uh, getting that in time. I'm not entirely sure what you'd have to do, because I know people were thinking we had some decisions we could take to improve that, but we really don't. We just got these from taking that, and, and none of those do it either. Yeah, this just releases them as subject. So uh, yeah, I don't know how you would get that up. It just seems like damn near impossible to do. Unless you like really focused on this branch here, maybe you can get this one, uh, but you want to get all of these, I mean the 35 day ones, but it's like those French ones where the more of these you get, the, the bigger investment you get here. Uh, so it's best to get all of them. So that's really only two focuses. So I guess that's the way you'd have to go to get it done. That's the only way. Uh, you get all these and then you get the regional development. So you get the, the daily compliance gain increased for the colonial police. So that'll actually make them better. But even that, uh, just looking at it, it seems like it wouldn't be better than what we're currently on. Yeah, I just don't think it's it's actually better than the uh, civilian oversight. Yeah, I don't think so, guys. It just improves it by a bit. Uh, now, it is better for all the other stuff you get. As you guys saw, it improves the colonial police quite a bit. But as far as compliance goes, it's not better than civilian oversight. So, yeah, I don't know how you do it, guys. Uh, it might just be a bug. Maybe they didn't uh, look at it properly. Uh, but yeah, let's go and get the colonial police into all these locations here that you can. You see that you cannot do that here in Austria or Croatia, uh, it's only in the African territories, which I believe it's even in the yeah, the Northern African ones. There we go. So we'll change over to Colonial Police for all those, because uh, yeah, we're not going to get the compliance gain on there, that's for sure. Uh, so we got the Ministry of uh, Italian Africa. Uh, we will want to get these. Uh, the building slots are pretty useless, of course. Um, well, that increases compliance gain by plus 5%. Hmm. Okay, so developing Ethiopia would get you plus 5%. But even then, you saw how you know far down we were. That wouldn't have been enough either. Though, it would have helped. But yeah, that wouldn't have been enough, guys. See, I'm not entirely sure how you do it. Now, I don't know what you would... Unless there's something else down here, if you just keep on pushing down. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, perhaps. If you just really focus on this side, you could get it done. But, uh, you know, it's not a big deal. You just lose that 25 political power. But, but yeah, I thought it was interesting that it just doesn't seem like you can get it done in time. Uh, we do not have enough support here uh, for us to get these ones yet. So we'll just continue working on the stuff over here. And we're going to do the Expand Rome Flying School next. So that's a 70-day focus. It'll just take a little while. But by the time we're done with that, unaligned support should be high enough. Uh, we're keeping these guys over here for now. Let me just see where it's sitting. It's pretty low. Yeah, you could assign them elsewhere. There's really not a whole lot for them to do other than to get intel up. Uh, you can see US Yugoslavia is breaking apart here. Uh, of course, they're all still going to be uh, together. But yeah, you could actually maybe get away with, with attacking these here because they're not guaranteed. So that's an interesting choice. We're going to continue watching them, you know, break apart here 
Uh, but yeah, we might want to, to attack Yugoslavia next. I think that would make sense. Yeah, that's probably what we'll do. Uh, we have not yet gotten the foreign affairs focuses yet, uh, so we'll have to start working on that soon. Yeah, this will give us some political power. Uh, it would move the national balance of power towards the Grand Council of Fascism. Okay, that's only if you, you hire that guy. These are these, uh, I think it's four different political advisors that you can hire into these positions, and it makes the Grand Council, uh, you know, more powerful. Uh, or you can instead give those positions to Mussolini and make him more powerful. He also gets a, a nice modifier there. Uh, but yeah, it's it's nice because if you, you hire them as advisors, they're taking an advisor slot. Uh, but if you just give that position to Mussolini, then it's like you're getting all these extra advisors. Not quite as powerful, but still, it's pretty good because you, you get to keep your advisor slots open. But yeah, I'd want to take that and then the, the Balkan ambition. So we'll get the uh, the claims over there. So that's one thing we'll want to work on eventually, but I really feel like getting uh, over to the Kingdom of Italy is is what we want to work on and prioritize right now. Uh, let's go ahead and let this play so we can get the units over here. And Wilhelm II does return to Germany, as I thought he would. And uh, we did lose that political power as well because we didn't get that mission done in time. Uh, so once we get these guys over here, we'll sign them. Uh, and the Chinese continue to push forward over here. Uh, no naval invasions just yet. I believe the AI Japan is blocked for from doing those for a certain amount of time when they're facing an AI China. So yeah, I'm really tempted to just work on pushing up this way because you know there's not a whole lot you're doing here other than you know obviously taking territory which is useful. But you go up this way, you cut off any units that are over here, uh, you uh, maybe knock them out of the war. So I think this is the better direction to go if we can, if we can make okay. that happen. So let's go ahead and. Have them. Actually, you know what? Let's focus this a little bit more. Yeah, let's give them that planning bonus, and he'll get to move it over there. We do need to get him a field marshal again. Got to do all this all over again, and uh, yeah, get Pietro over there. So the last thing we're gonna do here is just take a look at our ships, see if we need to do anything. We need to get those submarines over there, and these guys are done, so we can go ahead and put them back into the rest of the fleet. But yeah, I hope you guys did enjoy today's episode. If you did, make sure you like on the video, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment. Do hope to see you guys on the next one, and thanks for watching.